Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's K Gibbs F1 here, and welcome to Formula Xbox Season 7 action. Today we are in Russia at the Sochi Autodrome for the Russian Grand Prix. And why no Chinese Grand Prix, I hear you say? Well, I had a bit of laryngitis, which uh, meant I was in no fit state to race on Saturday evening a few weeks ago. So it was straight from Bahrain to Russia for us, and here we're looking to capitalise and make up for our absence last weekend. And uh, it's a decent track for me, Russia, and uh, it's a decent one for Pirelli as well, because there's very little knitted tyre wear here indeed. It's like a billiard table the surface, and so the tyres can just go on, on and on and on all day long. And as such, we could throw caution to the wind and disregard all regard we had for our tyres in qualifying. And as you can see, it was a 137 flat for me, which wasn't the best time in the world, but it wasn't horrendous either. It was a top 10 finish for us, ninth place as Clippers managed to just pinch P8 from us in the end there. Uh, very, very narrow margin between me and Clippers, in fact, just five hundredths of a second, and it dropped us down another row on the grid. So we're ninth uh, on the starting grid for the Russian Grand Prix and ultimately it's a top 10 start so yes we have to run the tyres we qualified on but as I've already mentioned it really makes not a jot of difference in Russia because of how limited the tyre wear is so as we take some fuel out of the car and uh, prepare for this 27 lap race we've got four and five red lights lights out and away we go 27 laps ahead of us, a lagging manner ahead of us, and we quickly dispatch Clippers now, so we're up into P8 straight off the bat, and we've got Vapid right ahead of us now, we've been battling here with him for the first two races of this season, will we be battling again? Well, it looks most like it at the moment, as we've got a laggy Renault to the right, a spinning Red Bull straight ahead of us as well, we've lagged, we've ghosted through him I should say, and we've passed Vapid in what was a yellow flag zone, so we've got to let him back through, but here comes Sam now as well, looking to capitalise, so he's gone down the inside in his Ferrari, I've absolutely bottled it into turn 5, and here comes Clippers as well, who's looking to capitalise, so by turn 6, we made it up to P7, we're now back down into P9, and we've got Elusive Kev all over our gearbox as well, as he looks to demote us another position, so lap 1's really not been my friend recently, I've been going backwards every single time, and yet again, we went forward, and we ended up going backwards, right to where we started, and we're looking down the inside now of Clippers, but no cigar there. Very limited opportunity to overtake when you're that far behind the car, uh, heading into the braking zone, so we stick in P9 for now, uh, but as you can see, a lap later, we've got the manor lagging all over the place. He kept lagging back into me, which is never good when you're league racing. It's pretty terrifying, to be fair. So as we tuck out of the slipstream now, it looks like he's running less wing than us because he's managing to pull away. Are we going to throw a Banzai down the inside? We absolutely are. And that is the wrong call as we go spinning 360 out of contention, out of the points. And it's a disastrous start for us as Scott cruises up to the back of us as well. So our teammate is right on our rear end now as we've had an absolute nightmare lap two. And as you see, it takes us a fair while to catch back up to the pack again. In fact, his sun's come out, and it's a beautiful day in Russia now by the time we've actually got onto the back of Elusive Kevin 10th. So we're going to have DRS service down this back straight, and uh, with the pace that we've shown over Elusive Kev in these opening stages, we don't want to be held up too long behind the Sauber. So with DRS, with Slipstream, with a, a bit of assistance as we head into the braking zone, we get the job done. So that's up into P10 for us. Points paying positions once again, and as you can see, at the end of lap 10 now, or we'll come towards the middle of lap 10, we've actually got Luke behind us on soft tyres, and this is a factor in this race. A lot of the guys ahead of us pitted a lot earlier than we did uh, to get rid of their super soft tyres to get a fresh set of boots, as the undercut is pretty powerful here, and um, a lot of people like Luke wanted to cash in on that in their various respective battles in this race. Luke, of course, is not our battle in this race, so we let him through. Not about to lose any time fighting the Renault. And uh, as you can see, at the end of lap 10, conscious of the undercut and conscious of Maestro setting a blistering pace behind me, I now head back into the pit lane. And uh, on lap 10, we're going to be switching from the super soft to the soft compound tyres that we hope will take us all the way to the checkered flag. And if they don't take us all the way to the checkered flag, well, at this point, I'll eat my hat, quite frankly, because tyre degradation, as I mentioned earlier, is pretty non-existent here. As you can see, we emerge from the pit lane in P10. 
with Worthy behind us on the super soft tyres, curiously. And this was a very curious strategy from Worthy because what it probably means is that he's going to have to make another stop in this race. So are we massively concerned if Worthy cruises past us? Not really because ultimately as long as we stay within about 20 seconds of him, we should pick up that place towards the end of the race when he has to make that pit stop again. And I realise I've rhymed in that sentence there. So apologies folks for going all Dr. Zeus on you in that moment. I promise it won't happen again. As uh, Well, as a, as a promise, I probably won't be, be keeping on that front, but oh well. So later on in the lap now, we've got Worthy ahead of us and a virtual safety car uh, ahead of us as well as that's deployed. I've got absolutely no idea why the VSC came out on this occasion. But given that we just made a pit stop just two laps previous, I was pretty nonplussed about it because, of course, what it meant was we weren't able to capitalise at all. And uh, although, to be fair, speaking of capitalise, you may have noticed the virtual safety car ended just as we were heading onto the straight. So we couldn't have really ended at a better time, in all honesty. So we picked up a little bit of time on our rivals there. And speaking of picking up time on your rivals, Worthy's had a drama. It looked like it was contact with Vapid Coots. And uh, Worthy was sent spinning round and around there he's probably dizzy but he's still managing to make an overtake on me by the looks of things as he's looking down the outside of me i'm now compromised heading onto the straight but we've managed to to squeeze him out on the exit but he's now going to have drs service he's now going to have slipstream as well and he would be able to put that to good use if he didn't have front wing damage so that's worthy out of the equation even though he had to make that extra pit stop that's put us ahead of him now and, and probably means that we won't see him for the remainder of the afternoon as we pick up a 10 second time penalty for exceeding track limits and I can I'm pleased to inform you folks that that was removed by the steward at the end of the race because as you could see it was brutally harsh and the game really did want to um, ruin my race with that one there quite unfairly so as the virtual safety car comes out again and ends again uh, very little will happen there so I didn't really include much of it but as you can see we actually capitalized again uh, with when it actually came to an end uh, on a straight once again and that meant we managed to catch up a little bit of time to Vapid Coots but behind us it was Wermaestro who as I mentioned earlier was on an absolute charge in his Red Bull and he's now caught onto the back of us on lap 18 and as you can see it's beginning to get a little overcast as well so I've got Jeff in my ear telling me that rain's pretty much imminent as Maestro makes light work of me down the straight and demotes me to P9 and my, uh, my mentality here is, well, let's let Maestro tow me up to the back of Vapid. And me and Vapid will resume our battle from Australia and indeed from Bahrain. And remember last time we bat oh, bat with Vapid. The last time I saw Vapid uh, on the racetrack in, in anger at the closing stages of a race, I managed to hit the back of him and exit stage left into the barriers and out of the points in Bahrain. So, <laughs> let's try and not make contact with the Force India again. And let's try and actually pick up some decent points here as we pick up a three second time penalty. This one absolutely justified so the steward won't be saying anything about that one. And I'll carry that one for the remainder of the race. As we see Maestro who has towed us up to the back of Vapid puts a move on the Force India as well. And suddenly it's a three way fight here as we've caught onto the back of these two. Maestro totally bottled it into the, into the breaking zone there. Locked up Vapid then got a sniff of the position as he heads back down the inside there and the two of them side by side for 7th and 8th through the complex here we're on P9 at the moment we're looking at the back of Apid but there's not a chance that we're going to be able to make that overtake work there where we might be able to make it work of course is down the front straight so with DRS service just a few hundred yards away and with slipstream on Vapid here we go he's actually it seems to slow down there I don't know whether that was a bit of lag involved but we managed to pull out to the outside and it's going to be the outside line for turn two but it doesn't matter anyway we've got the job done can we get it stopped yes we can so it's p8 for us it's maestro ahead in p7 can we hang on to, the, to his coattails well we're going to need to pull out all the stops if we can manage that and as you can see he's just edging away from us as we head through lap 20 and vapid is now going to have drs service on us are we going to have to go defensive most likely into turn 13. But as you can see, he's closing, closing, closing. Looks to the outside. We have indeed taken a defensive line. We're going to try and run him out of road on the exit. And that is precisely what we do. So we maintain P8 for now. We've gone wide through 14. That's given him the inside now for 15. So he's gone down the inside of us. Outside for 16. And that's position retained for us. He doesn't get very good traction off that corner there. And so we hang on. But of course, what that's meant is that Maestro has cleared off up the road. So he'll be pleased with that. 
And now he's got some fresh air in seventh place. So lap 21, the dark clouds get even darker and we are all over the show on the curb there. And that's Vapid's going to take that position nice and easily on the outside. And we are now demoted into P9. And we, we really wanted to get the pace in and, and get the job done uh, before the rain starts to fall. Because our wet weather running has been very, very poor indeed of late. So as you can see now, lap 22, and we're still hanging on to the back of Vapid. But we're already set to change to the intermediate tyres because this rain is beginning to fall. And we're beginning to lose a little bit of tyre temperature and a little bit of grip. But that's not going to stop us here because we seem to have a little bit more temperature than what Vapid does. So as the first raindrops start to fall on the camera lens, we're not perturbed at all. We've got our DRS open and we are heading cruising past, in fact, the Force India. He's later on the brakes than we are, but we don't have to be because we've got the inside line for the corner. We run him out of road and that is now P7 as a couple of guys behind us have already made pit stops. So... Clippers is now the guy ahead of us rather than Maestro. Uh, he's up in P6 at the moment. But um, we're going to be boxing at the end of this lap because our tyre temperature is dropping. Our grip is becoming thinner and thinner. And as Vapid decides not to box, we're thinking if we've nailed this and this is the lap to, pip, to box, then we are going to be in the pound seat in this one, ladies and gentlemen, particularly in the Vapid, in the vapid battle. As we box now, 22 mechanics waiting for us and intermediate tyres going onto the car. We had to be held a little while there as a Maestro, who actually had his own dramas a lap previous, uh, ends up coming into the pits and, and blocking our way briefly there. So as I almost drop it on the pit lane exit, that was a scary moment there. As uh, Jeremy Clarkson shed many poos shot out of my ain eye on that one. But uh, we managed to just about hold it and just about stay on the road as well by the time we got to turn two. And uh, that nearly went sailing off into the car park. But as you can see, we really did struggle on those intermediate tyres, just as I predicted a couple of laps ago. So we're under pressure from Maestro. And look who that is ahead of us. It's actually Vapid, who hasn't lost out at all in the pit stops, who's actually got the jump on us, in fact. So he actually managed to box either on the perfect lap or just had a fantastic outlap, or inlap, I should say, on those soft tyres. They just about made it work. I thought he was, his tyres were dropping cooler quicker than mine were but obviously not on that occasion as we go wide through turn five and maestro does not need a second invitation to pass us he goes down the inside by turn six and we're now demoted back into p9 which has seemed to be our favorite position this afternoon we finished p9 in qualifying we're in p9 in this race but as you can see we've got clippers ahead of us p6 rapid seventh maestro eighth and us ninth so there's a real possibility if all the guys ahead start battling and maybe have a little bit of a of wheel bang in contact, we might actually be able to make up a few places in these closing stages. As Maestro and Vapid repeat their, their antics from a few laps ago, going side by side through 13, 14, 15 now, and then heading up towards turn 16, as I'm all out of shape on the exit there, my rear end is all over the place, but so's Vapid, so he's gone wide there after battling with Maestro and coming off second best, and he's now come off second best in our little scrap as well, so that's P8, and we are not about to relinquish P8 in a hurry at all. As we've finally, we've battled hard to get ahead of this Force India. And we're going to try and keep this position for as long as we can at least. As we head wide again and pick up another 10 second time penalty. Just as before, the stewards are going to remove that penalty uh, come the end of this race. And speaking of the end of this race, as you can see, Clippers and Maestro having an absolute frantic duel there. Battling for P6 in the closing stages. We are going to close out p 8 which after penalties and after the stewards have finalised the results actually becomes a P7 finish for us. So, solid day's work in the end actually after what was a tricky qualifying section and uh, a, a tricky race really with the whole rain affected nature of the final stint. Uh, I will most certainly take a P7 finish and a few more points picked up from us. It would have been nice to finish a little further up the order given that we missed China last week. But ultimately, I will not scoff at 7th place in the slightest. Uh, congratulations to Sinan for taking the victory. Casey in 3rd and L Casey in 2nd, I should say. Doing him a disservice there. And his teammate Luke in 3rd position. I got the Renaults confused. You'll have to let me off that one, guys. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. That was Formula Xbox in Russia Season 7. And until next time, folks, I shall see you very soon. Goodbye.